We're back. We're live. <laughs> this is it. Mindful Metal Jacket, folks. I'm here with Sarah Talamash, the Hello. great, the wonderful, the incomparable. I don't understand incomparable. Doesn't what does that, that mean, mean compare? Yeah. Like you, you can't, can't compare, compare them? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm like, you can't do that with most people. I feel like you can do it with anybody. Well, you can. Remember, you can do the poor man's version. But I mean, like, you're comparable. Like, you could Ulrich be like. was the poor man's Johnny Depp. But now I think Johnny Jepp's the poor man's Johnny Depp. But is compare, is that really the root word of comparable? Am I right about that? Like, because I mean, couldn't I be like Michael Jordan is six foot six and black and Sarah is five foot five and white? I mean, isn't that yeah, comparison? We're, we're apples and oranges. Yeah. Somebody, I think that was an old um, uh, George Carlin joke. He's like, yeah, you can't compare apples and oranges. He's like, what do you mean? Oranges are orange and apples are red. And one's they're, delicious, they're, they're one's both sweet. They're fruits, Yeah, too. one's juicy. It's like, you totally compare. You can compare any two things. This they is both soft have skin. And this is hard. Hello, folks. <laughs> We're here. I got a hard cock. And uh, Sarah's here. I'm here. I'm queer. Lex is on the ones and twos. And uh, we're here to talk about old childbirth. Hit him with it, Sarah. You gave birth. We have a baby upstairs. Yeah, we're six weeks now. Yeah, six. We're into our seventh week. Yeah, he's starting to smile. It's really sweet. He's a smiley buddy. And uh, our friend recommended this book, Wonder Weeks. If you're having a child, if you have a child, check it out. And then we went to the doctor and I was like, what do you know about this book, Wonder Weeks? And she was like, never heard of it. (laughs) That's bullshit. Um, But he had a tough week last week. It was a, what do they call it? A regression or a leap? A leap. It was a big leap. A leap. A leap of faith, a leap year. It's where they learn a new skill. And then the joke is, this is the new skill. Um, <laughs> and so he was crust, crusty and uh, and fussy, but now he's back. He's rocking. We got him sleeping more. Yeah. I think he did four hours in a row last night. He's like a Springsteen show. Yeah. He can, he can really go, this kid. <laughs> but uh, it's exciting. We're parents. We're doing it. It's stressful. We're sleepy. We're having a great time. It's a definite change for sure an obvious one yes yeah we don't sleep <laughs> um but that's okay my blood pressure's through the roof i'm stressed out i'm having funky ass dreams i'm having some real wacky dreams because in my previous life i like to take tylenol pm on the weekends yeah we used to p we call them pm parties a pmp and uh now i'm not and i think those pms were really uh, quelling my dreams because now uh my dreams are wild and dead at the same time yeah it's kind of like uh your creative creativity goes up if you stop looking at your phone I mean, yes. i feel like if you're alone with your thoughts yeah i don't have that <laughs> so, um, <laughs> i did come up with a movie idea i'm gonna i shoot. had that yesterday or no friday when i was waiting for the doctor and it was taking a while and i didn't feel like reaching for my phone because i had no pants on because i was underneath the little blanket or whatever mm-hmm. and i had to sit there with my thoughts and i was just like this was i was having some really funny thoughts the you first time jot them down no it was just the idea of like we had a nurse that we would see every time that we'd walk in for my checkups uh for the baby oh yes and she was really sweet but one time she had like a big black eye and something else going on her face and then she goes to joe she's like guess what happened and it just is so funny to not tell us. And then we have to do, we have to guess what happened to her face. My first guess was like you spilled hot because it, it was recovering the bruise. So it was just like a purple. <laughs> and it looked like a kind of a stain. And so I was like, oh, you spilled hot coffee on your mouth. And she was like, no. And I was like, I got to stop guessing it's gonna get worse because i just picture being like oh you got stabbed with a sword she's like what no it's my birthday or something (laughs) it was really uh, it turned out she had a bunch of dental yeah and it caused bruising but the idea of like i don't know you blacked out landed on the cement and then came to and then came to work like how what where are we going with this but i while i was sitting there it was just making me laugh to think that uh, the doctors find out and then she has to get confronted or, where they're like, are you making people guess what's happened to your <laughs> face? And she's like, yeah, I thought it would be kind of fun. And also I'm like, <laughs> my next guess is like the guy you were seeing turned out to be an asshole. I don't know. <laughs> no. Like you, I don't know. Yeah. you got, She's like, no, why would you think that? 
I'd but you like, know what I mean? It feels like we were being set up for a trap. So that's what I was thinking about. And I, I feel like when you're on your phone, my mind wouldn't have gone too far into like a scenario of what was going on. Well, also the right answer feels offensive. I'm like, I don't know. All your teeth were rotting out. So they pulled them. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. You have horrible <laughs> dental hygiene. So was, they had to rip your teeth out at 50. It was just such a funny social situation that she had set us up with that I was like, that is so funny that I'd love to see that in a movie as a character choice. But I got to say this about that woman whose name I, I don't know and I wouldn't I put it, it in my comedic vault of like, that's something that you pull out in an improv game. We can shoot it. But I, I appreciate that lady because I talk about this She's in my really act sweet. now. For 10 months, 15 months, whatever it was, the entire, I mean, two years, the entire process of trying to have this wonderful child, I feel like I got no love from anybody. And love, I don't mean love like, oh my God, you're my hero. Not a hello, not a hi, not a how do you do. Every single fucking uh, x-ray, what do you call it? Sonic, or ultrasound. Ultrasound. I mean, people don't even make eye contact with me. It's like I'm just a piece of shit in there. Uh, and that lady was always very sweet and was like, look at you over there. You're being the thing in the scoop of the boob. Uh, and that's yeah. all I want is just look at me. Yeah. Uh, many people. She acknowledged didn't. you. We had many, many ultrasounds with many different doctors and some were tough. One was that Eastern European lady. Yes. She was hardcore. And she at one point was like looking at our like eight week old baby was like, or not old, but in the womb and was like, ah, oh, something wrong over here. Yeah. Something's wrong. And I was like, What? <laughs> What are you saying right now? She's like mumbling. This is something terrible. It was like the equipment or something. She's like, oh yeah, the cord's a little backed up. I'm like, what are you doing? But she'd be like, oh no. And you're like, what? Nothing. I I can't see him. Just like, yeah, yeah, no. I'm like, is my baby missing a brain? She's like, oh no, it's just, uh, it's going to rain on Wednesday. I have plans. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, people like bedside manner can be off sometimes. Right. But most of them were very sweet. Folks, this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Obviously, here at Mindful Metal Jacket, we really care about mental health. When you're wrapped up in the holiday season, it's so easy to totally forget about yourself and what you need. BetterHelp's online therapy is an amazing way to prioritize yourself in the midst of the holiday craziness. No matter what you've got going on, BetterHelp makes that therapy easy. Everything is 100% online and suited to your schedule. Talk to your therapist through video call, phone call, or message whenever and wherever is best for you. Whenever, wherever. Uh, I love therapy. All we talk about in here is therapy. It's the best. I go to see Alan. I haven't seen Alan in a couple of weeks. I got to get back in there. He keeps me on an even keel. I can't recommend talk therapy enough. It, uh, it changed my life, certainly. I did it as a, as a boy, as a kid. I did it in my early 20s, and I'm doing it now. And uh, I'm a lifer, frankly. That's how much I love it. To get started, just fill out a quick questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can even switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash metal today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash metal. M-E-T-A-L. All right. Back to the show. Thank you. And then so let's let's get into this childbirthing situation. Yeah. So we were scheduled for the 27th. Yes. No, 26. No, 26. We went in for the, we went at 3 a.m. on the 26th. Which is so weird. Like and I had to call in. I had to call in at one be like, can you take me? It sounded so like, are we going to do this? Like a secret Let's meet, meet me in the parking lot. We'll have a baby. Yeah, just a little fucked up. So you had to set your alarm for like 2 a.m. to drive, which by the way, they say it's the city that never sleeps, but you drive into Manhattan it's quiet. at 2.30 a.m. There's nobody out except for psychotic homeless people. Yes. Who we almost bumped into on the way in. Truly. And then so we pull up and then we go through and it's also never clear what entrance to go to the hospital. And then we went through there and well, then it was just, I was thinking... It was like Sarah Talmash right this way, but it, it was a lot like, I don't know. Confusion. Well, first of all, I have to say, I had to look up the parking garage situation because we drove in. We had to drive back with the baby, so we wanted the car there. So we drove in. I called to make sure the garage was open. It said open 24 hours. They're like, oh, yes, we're open. You pull in. It's just a fucking cage down, no lights, blackout. You're like, 
Okay. So then it's 2.45 a.m. We're getting ready for our appointment. I'm just like laying on the horn being like, hello, baby. And finally a guy comes out. You park. It costs $189 to park for two days oh, while we had a baby. That. Oh, yeah. It was horrible. So... <laughs> We park the car. Then the garage is like down the street from the birthing unit. So we're walking up the street. And literally, it was like the Lopper episode of Seinfeld. I just see two full kooks, like crazy bandages and a can't like walk in. Like, Motherfucker. And they're coming. And so I was just like, dive in here. I just duck into a door. And they're like, this is the emergency room. There's four guys in gurneys and they're all like shot. Triage or something, maybe. Yeah. And they're like, Very this, quiet, is, though. this is wrong. Get out of here. So they sent us to... The maternity. Maternity, whatever. yeah. And then uh, you fill out all this paperwork. And then while you're filling out the paperwork, you're like, I don't know if this hospital's on our insurance. <laughs> we literally <laughs> had a moment where we were Googling our insurance. And then you have the moment, too, where you're like, like why are we only looking at this right now? Where you're like, well, we're not leaving here. This is it. We're going. Yeah. So I'm like, we might get a bill for $350,000. I have no idea. No idea. We still, I keep getting a text from Mount Sinai, your bill is ready. And then I'm like, here we go. And then it's just $300. And you're like, no fucking way that it's just $300. Yeah. It That was for the circumcision. Yes. No, it's 500 Yes. But insurance our insurance covers covered it. $11 of it. Yeah. <laughs> just half the foreskin, not even half the foreskin. And then a, a C section. God knows what a C section is going to cost. It's going to be. Bananas. But, Bananas, yeah. So we went there, but we didn't intend on having a C-section. No, we didn't. So we were scheduled. I was going to try to do um, vaginal with an epidural. So I got the works. Mm-hmm. And then that's all weird because it's just weird because once you're just like, here we go. And then it's kind of like administration. And then as soon as you fill out the administration and they call you, everything starts happening pretty fast. Yes. Yeah. Like they set you up. So uh, I get the, is he beating you? Talk. Yeah. They do that to everybody and they've done that several incidences. Is that what they're doing at the doctor's office when they give you the iPad? Yes. I don't, I, this is, it's crazy. Every I now mean, and then. Yeah. Again, there should be a <laughs> stamp that's like, I'm not a piece of shit. You should get some kind of a scan or a chip in the head or whatever. Because every time we go, everyone just stares at you like this. And it's it's sad because obviously there's thousands of men just beating the fuck out of women still to this day, which is horrible. And I hope they all die. Yeah. I never can wrap my mind. I'm like, are you still beating your wife? And they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no good so everywhere we go we just have to have a check yeah off. we're not doing that anymore um but yeah so they we're sitting out there waiting they bring sarah in and i'm just like out there like <laughs> whatever i'm sure they're just putting makeup on her or whatever and yeah. then they come out and sarah reveals they're just asking me if uh, asking her if i'm a piece of shit i'm not yeah I'm cool. of course and um, then uh then that starts happening like i they get you with the iv that was in there it, it's you've got three three people working on you like you're like it's a pit crew like there's no you're like oh okay they're spreading your legs putting the catheter in then slumped you over putting my epidural in writing in all the stuff on the board i know and when you first get there too you meet a nurse you're like okay this is our lady yeah this lady's gonna birth our child and then they're just like oh no i'm gonna be long go- I, I will have retired by the time you have a baby yeah, because you get attached. I get attached where I'm like, oh, I thought we were friends. And then a new person comes in. And they're like, in. I will never see you again ever in my entire life. And the second shift comes in, you're like, who is this bitch? Yeah. And then she ends up we'll being nicer than the other one. Yes. Although not as attractive. But then we remember, Joe remembered the epidural guy who came in later again and he was like, Tron. Tron. Yeah, which everyone thought was so funny because the guy comes in and puts a 75 inch needle into my wife's asshole and. Uh, he comes in like 12 hours, like the next day. Maybe it was 24 hours later. I was like, hey, Sean. Yeah. I was like, hey, Ping. And, um, <laughs> and uh, everyone's like, oh, you guys know they each other. So they, funny. they thought it was like a riot. And I'm like, I don't know. I remember the guy. He was he was here. For a while putting needles into my spine. Yeah. I'm very grateful. You think, I will remember that man. Yeah. And his name's Tron. I'm not meeting a lot of Trons. I don't know how many Trons you guys know. Transformers, <laughs> I guess. Um, transsexual. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he was great, but it is also like, you forget, I don't know why I just thought we were going to go in and then a couple hours later, like I literally thought maybe we'll have a baby by 10 30 AM, which people laughed at me. 
They're like, it takes a long time. But I'm like, well, that's seven hours. Is seven yeah, hours that's not what a I long thought. time? I did think that. I didn't think we were going right away, but I didn't think it was going to be like wait a full 24 hours. So they were just waiting for me to dilate. And I wasn't dilating. And then they put, they forgot the name of the drug, probably just something, Otison or something at the end. Otis Anderson. Otis Anderson. Uh, and then they put a balloon in to get my water to break. And then we were like, here we go. And then I started feeling the extreme cramps. And this is almost 24 hours later. So we, I was thinking that we were about to rock and roll mm-hmm. with the vaginal birth. And then I was getting extreme cramps. And then I kept hitting that epidural button every 20 minutes, trying to do it even sooner. Like I need the every one minute. Yes. Sarah's a drug addict. Um, Cause the pain was pretty excruciating yeah and then uh she they finger you every few hours <laughs> they do um to see how your dilation and i wasn't i thought with the cramps i was like this is it i must be getting close to go time and then they were like you've done nothing yeah and it's also funny because you just assume like with hours passing and but we should there's you can read between the lines because like our doctor, Dr. Melker, our hero, she comes in and goes like, I'm going home for a while. Like she went, like literally went to her house. You're yeah. like, oh, so we're not even close. Yeah. Like she went home and took a shower and, and went on a Had date, a and went to a movie yeah. and was like, and like, because we asked the nurse, I'm like, hey, is taxes. Dr. Melker around? That like literally like, she's like, no, her, she's at home. She clocked she's out. Been, yeah. She's coming back tomorrow to give you your baby or whatever. So you're, it's a lot of just waiting. Yeah. Um, and then they would come in. Let, by the way, my friend Erica, who's upstairs and was last week's guest, one of her babies, they come in to check your circumference or whatever dilation. And it was like col- <laughs> it was like so college funny. night and they were training like seven doctors. And literally the doctor comes in and checks and goes, OK, that's three centimeters. Everyone come check out what three centimeters feels like. So like seven college boys in a row just fingered my buddy's wife in front of well, them. Wasn't it where they were like, is it cool if they are in the room? They're caught their medical students. Is it cool if they join in on the exam? And I think your mindset is like, oh, yeah, they're just taking notes. And so you say yes. And then they're like, OK, get in there, boys. Yeah, they're just all like <laughs> and then they smell and, um, and, and keep it moving. He, Erica's husband, your good friend, had to watch his wife just get <laughs> fingered by seven college kids. Yeah. So now his wife's in labor and he's got a heart on it. It's just a little embarrassing. <laughs> but. Um, but anyways, yeah. And I kept thinking like, cause it starts at zero centimeters or whatever, or one centimeter, it's supposed to get to 12 centimeters and yeah. like literally 10 hours later, they're like, we're at three. And I'm like, okay, that's something. It's like family feud. You're like, good answer. Yeah. And they're like, oh no, we're just manually doing that with a balloon. Yeah. And like, okay. So we are just failing. Yes. And I didn't know, I actually didn't know that your body could just not take to it. And I only knew it within a week, but I thought that was one incident. So I didn't know it was quite common for that to happen. So immediately after they were like, okay, let's do, I said, let's just do C-section. Right. So, and then our, they were like, let's get a room ready. And then after that, then you're like, it's that goes by so fast and that, but yet so much time goes on. Well, that's happening. It's a weird thing because, and I was saying this earlier, is like you get, I feel like there's a natural like psychological thing. You adapt to whatever thing you're at, whatever you're doing in life. Like, so you were pregnant for so long, almost a year, you know, for nine months. And so it just feels like you're always just going to be pregnant. You can't imagine that you'll have a baby. Yeah. And then you go there and you're like, okay, we're going to have a baby. But then we're in labor for so long or the labor, whatever it's called labor room so long that you're like oh so this baby's just not gonna come because we're not getting closer and then there's a moment where the doctor comes in and goes all right well so we'll do a c-section you're like great and then i remember being like so what does that entail like when are we talking she's like well they're gonna go find a room and prep it it'll be like 45 minutes yeah and you have this moment of like so I'm going to have a baby in 45 minutes. Yeah, and then you're like, I'm not ready. I know, it's like two <laughs> Seinfeld episodes. I'm just going to be a father. It's weird, and you do. You are like, you know what? Just never mind. Just cancel it. We got to do some more thinking, whatever. Yeah. No, not yet, not yet, not yet. You're it's like, a weird feeling. Yeah. 
So then it goes by fast and then you're getting briefed by, it's like three different people in the room. You got the doctor, assistant, anesthesiologist, and then the person that handles the baby stuff after that's born and you're getting bombarded with, it's like you're on the West Wing getting tons of questions and briefed on stuff. And you're like, yes, I will do that. No. Okay. What else is happening? Like you're just like executive decisioning all over the place and you're not ready for it. It reminds me of the old Seinfeld bit about the pilot going, uh, we're going to make a left at St. Louis. We're going to fly 35,000 feet and we're going to go down. And he's like, yeah, just, whatever. Just end up where it says on the ticket. <laughs> That's what it feels like. It's just like, yeah, all right. Just fucking hand me a baby. I don't care. Yeah. They're like, we're going to give you the blood pressure. And we're going to give you this drug and that thing. And you're like, I don't give a fuck. Just hand me a baby. Let me know what I got to do. Yeah, well, that's when it dawned on me on like, oh, that's the birth plan that I was like, birth plan? What does that mean? We'll figure that out another day. Yeah, I just assumed birth plan. It was like, just get it out of me. Mm -hmm. Not, I want Joe to catch it. I want to have direct contact. I want to be the one that feeds it. That was a thing I didn't know. The golden hour until the day of. Oh, I don't know the golden hour. It's Still, like I know golden shower. The first feeding after he's born. Oh, I watched a lady do that. It yeah. wasn't you. No, but some <laughs> people ask to be the first one to feed. Oh. I guess so you can lock, like it's imprinting or something. Well, I'm really happy with the way we Same. did it because I didn't I wanna... just go with what the doctor does day in and day out yeah we're big doc we're gonna get a lot of shit we're big doctor people I've, if doctor mentions a fucking vaccine shove it right in the baby's ass to i'll drink it i don't give a fuck yeah if they're dealing with the data and the numbers yeah and they've seen it all i'm going with that what they know more than what i know they're like you can go with rfk or the doctor i'm going doctor i'm going doctor. call me gay i know i mean like, that's gonna just blow up the internet we're gonna be like that's they're gonna you be need. like your son i know that's a good point i should lean into this i always get annoyed i'm like that's right rfk is a quack piece of shit yeah and our son's gonna be autistic in, in february just kidding <laughs> and if he is we love that for him we will donate him with the baby clothes um no it's gonna be great i mean i'm half autistic anyways who gives a shit i know every I best picture all of winner. new york is yeah well nowadays every single person is autistic which by the way i meant to ask erica about that her brother's actual yeah. meat and potatoes autistic as kurt metzger would say but any farts so yeah we went into that uh surgery but but first before that like they take you out to go prep you and i think i told this on the other podcast but or maybe it was this one with Doug Key, who just had his baby, by the way. All the listeners that listen to the Doug Key episode, he has a son, very healthy. And uh, if you're following along at home, you've probably seen it on Instagram, but that's exciting. You can go listen to the Doug Key episode and know that he safely and wonderfully had his baby, um, which felt like it was months later than ours when it was scheduling. And now it was actually only six weeks apart. Yeah. When I talked to her in the TWA pool. Oh, yes. At Norman's celebration. I felt like... As a six month pregnant lady, you know, when you feel yeah. like you have so much more wisdom, even though you're only two months ahead. Yes, of course. Yes. Um, but anyway, so they wheeled Sarah out for the C-section and then I was just left alone in that room that we had been in for 23 hours that I thought was going to be the significant room. Of course, it is significant, but I thought our baby was going to be born there. So it was a very uh, meaningful place. They wheeled you out and I realized I'm just sitting in the place by myself, you're off getting prepped, you're in danger, What? not in danger, but you know, it's risky, it's a surgery. Yeah. And uh, I was sitting there looking out at my own reflection in the window and the city lights, it's 2.30 in the morning and uh, I got quite emotional, I have to say. Well, yeah, I feel like having, this sounds really snobby, but like the having a baby in New York definitely feels like, you just picture the music that's playing in the background. It's like... <laughs> I'm back back in the New York groove York I was singing like music from the movie author Arthur oh. if you get caught Underneath between the moon and New York City would you like another fish great film yes where are we hmm okay we don't sleep anymore <laughs> you pulled an Erica on me Erica, we did the previous episode with Erica, who's never done a podcast ever. She's not in show business. I just did like, I talked for like four minutes and just volleyed it on over. And she was like this. 
And I was like, okay, well, I don't know. Well, I didn't know where we were at at this point. I don't know. You said Arthur. Oh, in the story. I don't yeah, know. Oh, like having so a, the yeah, having a kid in New York City with the backdrop, you're on, because usually in the hospitals in other cities, like you're on the fourth floor or something. Yeah, we were on the 11th floor. It was emotional. And I've told the story before, but then Matt Salakus showed up and gave us pie. And we we're like, how did you get in here? Which is hilarious. Yeah. And he was, was like, I was born here. <laughs> And Matt Sackies for the folks at home is 75 years old. Um, but any jizz. So then they came and got me. And I, I was I was afraid I was going to miss the surgery because you had been gone for like 45 minutes. And then I had to go drop the luggage off and move around. Came in the surgery room and then tell them about being strapped in, strapped down, all that stuff. Well, yeah, you're just like. Well, first I barely could move my legs because they're epidural. So there was a lot of transferring to the other bed. And you're just like, I was like Tom Cruise from 4th of July. Born, born on the 4th of July. 4th of July is my I movie. Was, I was Captain Sinise or whatever, Gary Sinise's character. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lieutenant Forrest, Dan. Get, I was Lieutenant Danning everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like falling on the floor. You loser, you freak. <laughs> Um, um, and then, you know, I always, my favorite part is when you go under anesthesia, anesthesia. Yeah. Because Anesthetized. it's so we, I actually really enjoy it cause it's so weird. It happened. They put it in you and then immediately they're like, do you feel any of this? And you're like, no. Yeah, that's fine. And you're like, I do feel pressure, but the way that you all of a sudden, I ha I give a great amount of trust to doctors, even though I've heard horrific stories where they were in pain and couldn't tell, didn't weren't having the ability to say that it didn't work. Right, but that's a lot of TikTok. There's always something for everything. It's a Reddit. You know? Yeah, there's a Reddit thread. There's a TikTok. There's a thing. Everybody's had some horror story, got the wrong leg amputated. But our doctor that I'm always talking about now, Dr. Melka, who we love, is just so laid back and chill. It's so helpful. We're like, is there any chance her legs are going to not go numb and then die? She's like, no. Nah. nah. Don't worry about that. Um, well, it didn't anywhere. But I love how it's just like, you just feel the pressure and then all of a sudden you know they're cutting you up and you feel nothing. Yeah. That's uh, insane to think about. I can't imagine. So it's like a little scalpel thing that they just drag across. What yeah. is it? I don't know. I should have watched a video where, and then all of your insides are like this. Yeah. It's, it, like I picture in the movie I'm, aliens where it's like, I'm thinking empire strikes back where he slices the fucking snow horse or whatever it's called and gets in it. Yeah. Remember he hides in there. And then, um, which movie was it? Oh yes. Empire yes, strikes yes, back. yes. And yeah. then the revenant. Oh yes. The revenant. He hides also. In it. Bear. Great film. I love that. Movie. Yeah. Me too. Um, yeah, and then they cut you up, and then it feels like I don't know what the that's the thing is like the whole time. I call it sandworms from Beetlejuice, where you feel like you were gone for five minutes, and they were like you were in there for two hours. It felt like it went by really fast, but I think it actually goes by longer than you think it is. It's a really fucked up thing because I took a lot of photos in there, and they put the baby in a little crib thing, and there's a clock running up. Um, like we said, it, it feels like doing a late night. And I have photos where like the clock reads like 47 minutes. So like, I guess I was in there for an hour, which I don't remember. I feel like I was in there for 10 minutes. I felt like they pulled the baby out and they dropped a little curtain, which yeah, is adorable. They do. It's so funny. They have a little curtain. They have this little curtain device that actually pulls apart that it's a clear screen that you can see it. And then it snaps back where it's like, it should have music. <laughs> the, that would be part of my birth plan like when you pop the curtain i want you to play this kind of song yeah it was quite something i mean and then we're having and this intense big. moment yeah so there's like a curtain we're having this intense moment and saying i love you and whatever and then the anesthesiologist is just literally sitting behind us like chewing gum staring he's like that's really sweet <laughs> and you're like dude fucking beat it and it was a, a beautiful moment, of course. They pull it down. You hear the baby crying. I have the recording of our baby's first cry, which is very sweet. And then they put him in a little crib and you go over there. And then I sang him happy birthday, which was adorable. And But yeah, I was in there for an hour and there's literally fucking blood and guts everywhere. There's like the big lamp had blood on it. I mean, it was a bloody mess. By the way, <laughs> I have to tell this story. I recorded his first 
cry and he's crying and it's beautiful and it's sweet and the video i mean the audio ends with you hear this that is one giant placenta <laughs> and i'm not i kidding. know i didn't i guess i made one huge placenta yeah that's literally how the audio ends and i'm so grateful i have it i knew i had an unusual placenta because they kept telling me throughout the pregnancy it was like a double placenta i've known since i first met you the first time I laid eyes, I was like, this bitch has got a giant placenta and She's I want to make it. I want to smell it. Um, and then I didn't know this is like as soon as they pull them out, I guess maybe with anesthesia and a hormone drop, you shake uncontrollably. And it's not even from your it's not like because you're cold and you cannot stop it. Well, this is the beef. The one beef I have with the whole unit over there and uh, and Melka, I know you're listening. Maybe she told us. I don't know. I, I don't know how they don't all say individually as you're going in, just a heads up, you're going to shake like fucking Muhammad Ali and Michael J. Fox had a baby on a cold day. I, I was shaking like Julia Roberts and Steel Magnolias when she has her diabetic attack. Yeah, I mean, uncontrollably. And of course, like I'm like, uh, my wife is passing away. Is anybody? And they're like, oh, no, that just happens. And I'm like, that should have been, instead of all the numbers and the digits and the gadgets, they should have been like, just a heads up, you're going to shake uncontrollably. Well, I was thinking, I was like, they're not going to make me hold the baby, are they? Because I can't even keep my body still no we just held it up next to you like you were like a elderly person like i again like i ordered a bottle of wine which was very sweet (laughs) is this your baby yes that is my baby thank you (laughs) i guess that's why they ask if i'm a piece of shit earlier because once you're born they're just immediately like all right sir you go take the baby yeah and they don't you don't have to pass a course or a class or anything they just hand you a baby that's literally three minutes old and i'm like walking around with them back yeah they don't tell you how often to feed him when he's gonna feed i do have the audio at the end when we were leaving they did a long thing that i recorded the nurse being like feed him this amount if he cries this if he does this do that yeah so they give you some lessons but um and then it turned into a great big nightmare because yeah i took a turd they didn't have a uh, recovery room area for me yet. And then so I had to stay in the operating room for a while. And then I felt self-conscious because they were like, do you want to hang out with your baby? And I didn't know how to hang out with my baby amongst strangers where I really wanted just to hold him and be quiet. But I thought maybe I had to chit chat with him. Yeah. So you just did you chit chat? I chit chatted. Yeah. I, I was... Um yeah, we had a full conversation. I mean, it was one-sided, but when I was over there, I, I sang him Happy Birthday and I sang him a few other songs and just uh, told him all a lot of nice things about him himself. <laughs> I said, I, I, you know. Yeah, he's a sweetie pie. Yeah, he was a sweetie pie and I just thought he was really nice and he was making some noises. And but I said, there's oh, some things nice. that I can't remember, like in the recovery room, I don't remember if he was with us. Yeah, he was. I thought he, they took him downstairs. They did for a while. Well, first of all, it's important to remind yourself like I couldn't and remember home, where they took him. We literally were in there for 12 hours and we sent him to the nurse. And this is what made me really upset. And it actually went from the best moment of my life to a really one of the most difficult times in my life because we had the baby in the operating room and it was very exciting. And I sang him happy birthday and all that fun stuff. And we brought him over to you and we, we cried and we were in love and all that stuff. And it was beautiful. And then I left and they were like, just wait out here, which was not in our room. We didn't have a room any longer. I was just in a general family waiting area with some syndicated talk show that I've never heard of that was loud. It was like, all right, this week's guest is this thing. And it's like full. I mean, it was like a Kubrick film. It was four o'clock in the morning. I've now at this point, I've been awake for 45 hours and um I'm trying to sleep, but you're in a chair. Yeah. I thought I was going to be out there for a half an hour. I was out there for three hours by myself with nobody coming. And it felt like the sort of American medical system. Yeah. Like you're in there and everyone's an unbelievable night. The nurses and the doctors are incredible. But once you're done, they got to move on to the next baby. And I'm just out by myself. Finally, they let me come into the recovery room and the baby was in there. He was in a little tray. And um, we were in there for 12 hours, which you're supposed to be in there for about an hour. Well, that's the thing I don't remember because I don't think I was holding him in there. You held him f- maybe for a minute uh, or so. But no, we, he was basically, he went to the nursery. They take care of him. Oh, that's what I was going to say is at that point, I was like, I need to sleep. Yeah. This is crazy. 
And they took him to the nursery, which is when you sleep, because they're just taking care of him, giving him whatever. Oh, so he did him. get to go to the nursery. He went to the nursery for quite a while, but we had I had no seat. I was in like literally a seat like with no arms or cushions, just like a little like... Pfft, pfft. And so I was like leaning my head on the fucking railing. Yeah. And I was like, can we please have a room? And you needed water and they didn't get us water. Yeah, I was thirsty. I was also extremely hungry because I had gone almost 24 hours with no food. It was a uh, just a, broth. A pretty big nightmare, and uh, we were in a room not suited to lounge in for twelve hours, and then eventually they finally took us. And then it got awkward because I got they get found us a room, but I had to share it with a woman that was going through a miscarriage. And you're like, here we are celebrating our birth. Yeah. And this lady, and I not even a miscarriage. I want to say it was probably technically a stillborn. Yeah, it was bad, and like her, also her like family was coming in and out, and we were on the first when you enter like the first room. Yeah. So like just people were just walking, stop in and out, in and out, and they, I mean, and an what were we gonna do? Be like, can you not do that? Yeah, could you guys kind of quiet down? But like, it's only natural when you walk our by new someone, baby that we just had, that and it, you would have had. It's only natural to kind of like peek over when you're walking by. So like people are just making eye contact over and over again, yeah. and they just also happen to be Hasidic. <laughs> Jews and so they were wearing like big or Pick orthodox, hats. not Hasidic. Which one's Hasidic. what? Hasidic, yes. Yeah, I confused Hasidic the... and Orthodox, excuse me. And they had like he had like the big giant birthday cake hat. Yeah. And was like kind of look by and I'd be like, Hey, how do you do? And then like the mother came by and then the dad came by and he had a birthday cake on and everybody was just kind of going in coming and out. back and you're just like, This is bananas. Yeah. And they were crying and, and the doctor would come and then I went to get dinner. And the nurse was like, we're going to get you out. This is like really unfair to both of you. And I was like, thank you. Both of us, meaning their group and our group. Um, and then I went and got dinner at some diner, the Flame Diner on the west side. And then when I came back, they were had started the process of moving. And I've never cried so hard in my life because they gave us a room, a private room with a couch that turned into a bed. Yeah. And TV on demand. They had a league of their own in Greece, which we watched, which I cried through the entirety of both of them. And then the world series, because that's when you get into the mode of like, Oh my God, we have a baby now. We're parents. And I haven't slept. And so I'm emotional. And we put on Greece and I just couldn't stop crying just at like the opening images that like cinema exists. Cause it does give you a feeling of like, life of like this yeah. kid is going to experience cinema for the first time and uh it's just the most gratitude i've ever felt in my whole life and uh i just didn't stop crying for like 36 hours <laughs> now i've stopped crying and uh, he's taking my place he cries instead yeah, he cries all the time um but yeah that was wonderful once we were in there but there was 12 hours that i fucking wanted to firebomb the place yeah and then it was from then on trying to figure out how much to feed him and i still don't know i still don't know well there they give you we call them little bud lights they yeah, we just call have them like, bud lights they're because i may now we're making the formula but these are pre-made you snap the bottle cap and you stick the nipple on and then you just put it in his mouth and it was easier and he could rip through those and you could see the bubble he was like this and you could literally watch it be like bloop, 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 bloop. It was yeah. like a fucking video game. We eat the energy or whatever. Yeah, and then the next day our coffee table is covered with like five. That's why we call them Bud Light. Yeah. Because it reminded us of our drinking days. But I have to say this part because it was so funny. One of the nurses, I mean, literally every nurse and doctor was just incredible. So incredible. nice. I end up, I always, people always say they have horrible, uh, not a ton of people, but I do hear people say they don't like nurses. They think they're mean and shitty. But I have to tell you, I've never had a bad experience with a nurse and I've been in and out of hospitals a lot or like in childhood and then not so much adult years, but I've had a few incidences and now we're wondering the people that say they've had bad nurses. It makes me think it's what you put out. You get back. Well, DeRosa got in trouble. Remember That's DeRosa what I'm did thinking. a big bit about how <laughs> nurses are the worst and uh, not a, not a cupcake of mean. a man, DeRosa. Not a <laughs> and uh, it was a huge controversy, but, yeah, most mostly they're wonderful and doctors. Yeah, I've never had a bad experience with a nurse. I always feel like they've been the nicest and most caring. No, they were wonderful, but, but also childbirth is a different thing too. I mean, I think if you're you're shot, Lexi's been shot. 
Um, you know, maybe they're different if you've been, if you're a drunk driver, maybe they're coming in being like, here's your fucking soup, you piece of shit or whatever. I don't know. But also I have to say this part because it's so, so funny. I think I'm pretty easy as a patient. Yes. Uh, it's, but it's so fucking hilarious. The lady comes in she goes, what you got to do, my advice to every parent and to you guys, use the night nursery, send off the baby off. I know you want to be with your baby, but you got to send them to the nursery They'll take care of them. You got to take advantage because you need to sleep and you're not going to have a chance to sleep because you're bringing the baby home and sleep is the most important thing. You'll literally go insane. You'll get divorced. You'll kill the baby if you don't sleep. Use the night nursery. Oh, I just remembered we're short on staff. There's no night nurse this weekend. I swear to God that happened exactly like that. And I have to tell you, I feel like never getting a full night's rest before I could start being a parent. I feel like I made me feel like I've been behind the whole entire like i've never gotten my footing no it's how i feel and I'm about sure it. that would not be the case but that's how i feel i feel like because we never got well rested before we went into the thick of life i've just always felt like i'm behind no and it's hard because then you have and people, i can't get caught up people come visit we have a friend here now my parents came people come and they're like go take a nap but you're like Well, now I don't, I'm not a big napper when my friends are outside of my bedroom. It's just, is too (laughs) weird. You're like, well, I want to be with you. Like I want to hang out and it's just awkward to be in our house. Now our apartment, again, New York apartment, people don't understand New York living. Like our living room and bedroom are basically one room with just foldy doors dividing them, which the first night our friend Erica was here. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to bed. I can't keep my eyes open. I'm psychotic. And then you must have been doing your A material. Because <laughs> we like, as soon as I lay down, Real she's like. Housewives. <laughs> and I almost went and fucking shot her. I was like, you got to be kidding me. And then you popped in. And I was like, you guys got to shut the fuck up. And you're like, I'll turn it down. I'm like, I don't hear the TV. I don't hear you. I hear her being like, oh, no, I know. That was crazy. <laughs> and uh, so it's hard. And people are nice. They try to help. But they're like, yeah, go take a nap. And I'm like, I, I, I just I'm like, I need to sleep solid. But it, it's also you're just fucking stressed. I'm just stressed out and having fucking weird dreams and everything. So, yeah, I'm, we're fucked. And then everyone's like, yeah, you just don't sleep for the rest of your life. So that's it. Yeah. Well, we're fitting it in here and there. It's just not consecutive. But now we got, I did my six week check. Everything's healing right on path. I'm going to be able to work out soon. And then, uh, gotten, oh, bleep that. Make a note of that. Uh, the baby is right on. It just had a six week checkup. Yeah. He's yeah. healthy as a horse. He's a healthy boy and um, it's exciting. Yeah, it's wonderful. And we got. And he's a, been doing smiles and. Yeah, we only got 20 years to go. <laughs> and then we'll sleep. And, then, and again, I always bring it up. There's like many studies. Having a child, your quality of life goes down, but then it goes back up again when they leave the house. Yes, and we'll be dead by then. So we got a little time before our lives get uh, better. But I'm having a great time. I love the little onion and uh He's a little onion. Yeah, he's a son of an he's onion. Got lots of little layers. And he's an onion and uh it's wonderful. You're doing great. So are you. Yeah, you're a beautiful person. I love you. I love you. That's um, sweet. All right. That's it. Where do, where can they find you? Lady Journey, of course. Lady Journey and I have a special coming out on YouTube in the new year. Called Butthole Ish. Money. Butthole Money. Stay tuned. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, please, 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 please. Yeah, subscribe. That's how you get them. <laughs> subscribe. That's what Bert's always doing. He just comes out. And he's like, please come to the show. For God's sakes, I'm dying. Um, yeah, um, that's a joke. That's not what he does. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, check out. Uh, tell people about this podcast if you can. Uh, I'm trying to keep the podcast going. I know we had a, a little break there. It's hard to do everything. I'm trying to do a lot of things. And... Um, keep it going if it can keep growing i'll keep doing it it's not easy um but i love you for supporting i appreciate it check out my upcoming dates i got a bunch of them tacoma in january uh followed by poughkeepsie comedy mothership i think sarah's gonna be at that we're gonna try to figure that out i hope uh or at least on some of the shows tacoma you're gonna do some of the shows um and um what else uh, a bunch of dates raleigh and fucking i don't know check out my website check out punchuplive.com joe list look me up on there 
And uh, subscribe to YouTube and watch all the other stuff. Tuesdays with Stories, Joe and Ron on Tuck Movies, Mindful Metal Jacket, The Regs. I'm doing too much. I hate myself. God bless you. Be nice to yourself. 